is C.S. Lewis in heaven? Well, before I try to at least unpack an answer, let me say I'm not in the general habit of uh, making pronouncements about who is in heaven and who is not. Uh, I do believe that the only way for anyone to get into heaven is by the blood of Christ, and that the blood of Christ uh, comes to those and only those who rest in the finished work of Christ alone. Uh, now, whether or not that describes C.S. Lewis is something people have debated, and one of the reasons they have debated that is because of some really unhealthy things that C.S. Lewis said, which I'm happy to acknowledge he has. Uh, that said, uh, he's one of the most helpful people I've ever read in my life. He's had a profound influence in shaping who I am. Uh, and yes, I do think he's probably going to be in heaven at the end of the day. I don't want to dismiss uh, the problems. And in fact, I'll very quickly gloss over them here. Um, but I, I'm acknowledging that they exist. And I think, hope anybody that's being honest would. But I don't think that these... Uh, errors uh, are proof positive that he's somehow outside the faith. Let's start with uh, the most obvious and clear one, which shows up at the end of uh, the Chronicles of Narnia in book seven, the last battle. You have a kind of, at the very end of the story, a kind of strange pseudo affirmation of a pseudo kind of universalism, or at least uh, something akin to it, because uh, you have a uh, Tashbenite, which is thinly veiled uh, picture of a Muslim uh, who's welcomed into eternal life uh, on the basis that uh, uh, Aslan has received his worship of the God of the Tashbenites as worship of him. So he's sort of an unknowing believer because he's culturally uh, blinded and Yikes, that's bad. I mean, that's terrible. To his credit, Lewis didn't say that God uh, just receives anybody for any reason, but and it does connect uh, the salvation of this uh, Tashbenite with uh, the work of, in this case, Aslan. Uh, but secondly, that brings us to the work of Aslan in the first of the stories, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And if you think the... Uh, magician's nephew is the first story, then I'm going to worry about your salvation. Uh, the first story is the line, the witch in the wardrobe. And there uh, we have a kind of implied view of what's called the ransom theory of the atonement. There's actually two ransom theories, one not so bad, the other so bad. And this is kind of the set so bad one. Uh, it almost looks as if the payment, according to Lewis, that Aslan made, presumably reflecting the payment that Jesus makes, is to the devil himself, or the white witch in this context. Uh, and that's not a good view of the atonement. It is the wrath of the Father, uh, which is appeased by the sacrifice of Jesus. There, the devil has no right, no ownership over any of us, uh, and so that was unhealthy. The last thing uh, that I'm aware of that was particularly uh, egregious on Lewis's part was uh, his view of Scripture. He he uh, did not embrace a, a, a view of inerrancy uh, and in a way that's somewhat odd. That is, uh, his rejection was less because, you know, science has disproven this or science has disproven that, more over his distaste over the uh, imprecatory psalms. Uh, and he spoke very negatively about the imprecatory psalms, which I believe is God's word. Now, uh, are these serious errors? Absolutely. Are they, uh, do they demonstrate that one is outside the kingdom? I don't believe so at all. And I think it's uh, pr profoundly unhealthy to think that it might. Now, again, it's bad. But the gift of Lewis was not being sound theologically. The fellow was uh, essentially, um, uh, you know, Arminian in his theology as well, which is a whole other thing. All sorts of weaknesses. But what Lewis brought to the table 
was an acute and an astute understanding of the nature of man, of the nature of our sin, of the love of our Father for us. Uh, he had the capacity to teach these things in ways that uh, got into our hearts. And so I remain grateful for him. I look forward to meeting him. Again, I'm not sure. I can't promise. But that's my take on the question, Lewis. Yeah, there's some bad, bad bones that need to be spit out. But by God's grace, thankfully, they're great big ones and easy to find. <laughs> 